Welcome to another episode of the Pilot Talk podcast by OSM Aviation with my friend Captain Michelle Treskin and myself, Stein Mjotweit. We're two commercial pilots and flight instructors with a shared passion for aviation and the aviation industry. The Pilot Talk podcast is made with the ambition to inspire, educate, and entertain you, our beloved listeners who either share our passion for flying or simply want to get a peek behind the cockpit door. In this podcast, we will discuss flying, flight training, career advice for pilots, and other interesting topics from the exciting world of aviation. And in today's episode, Michelle, we have some special guests. I know, I know. Ex, ex students from uh, OSM, actually. Uh, yeah. A couple. Exactly. Maria and Victor. And yeah. uh, they are both pilots. And uh, you know what? They're both pilots and they're, they're flying on the same airline. And they're first officers, but they have the same, almost the same roster. Anyways, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a gas listening to them talking about uh, their journey, uh, their aspirations, and and all that. I mean, it's a, it's they're a great couple. You're gonna love it. Yeah, it's a really good. They have a really great story. Like you said, they're alumni from OSM Aviation Academy. They both fly the Boeing 737. Right. And it's gonna be interesting to hear about you know the lifestyle of being a couple and both of them being pilots and how to make everything work and. And the challenges that that brings with them. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned, everybody. It's going to be a good one. You bet. You are listening to Pilot Talk by OSM Aviation. Okay, welcome Maria and Victor to uh, the Pilot Talk podcast. I'm so happy you guys could join us uh, for this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. It's great to have you on board. It is, it is. And uh, you are all, all of you guys are in Spain, down in the nice and warm well, you know, weather. They notice a tan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been out it's, sunbathing right. for a few days now. There's no, yeah. there's no makeup here, okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Yeah, so um, for those who don't know you from before, I know you guys have a, you know, a lot of followers, uh, you're well-known figures, but tell us a little bit about yourself, tell us uh, about how you got into aviation, give us a little bit of background story before we dive into the episode. Ladies first? Oh, ladies first, yep, yeah, so I'm Maria, uh, also known as Maria the Pilot, all over Instagram, uh, 28 years old from southern parts of Sweden, where I started my aviation training to become a pilot. I did that, oof, that was a long time ago now. 2010, I started my journey. And then wow. in 2015, I got my first job as an airline pilot. And uh, yeah, worked as an airline pilot since then. Super happy. Now based in Spain in Alicante with this dude. Yeah. Hey, dude. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and it's so funny that our paths through aviation or towards our goal as becoming an airline pilot has been more or less identical. Like wow. we met in high school uh, one year before we started our flight training. And I remember the day still, it was, you know, one of those first days in class when you, you tell your name, what do you want to work with in the future? What are your hobbies and so on? And I said like, hi, my name is Victor. I want to become a pilot. And then half through the class, it was Maria's turn. And she's like, hi, I'm Maria. I want to be a pilot. And I was like, I got my eyes on you. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Oh, that's great. So ever since that day, we kind of kept that, you know, common ground and we talked about it. Maria told me her dad was a captain and all that. Uh, I didn't have any family members in aviation. So for me, that was super interesting. I didn't know Absolutely. any pilots, but I still wanted to become one. So we talked a lot about it and then we applied for the same school. Hmm. So OSM, Aviation Academy, back then SAA. <laughs> What else? You know, it's the best school in the world. Exactly. So <laughs> you applied to the one up in the north part of Sweden, yeah. Arvidsjar, uh, and I so. applied for the one in Vesteros. Uh, okay. I, thought she, I thought she was mentally ill. Like, why do you want to go up there? It's so freezing cold and dark all <laughs> year know. round. And you're going to be far from me. What's going on? About it. Exactly. 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 <laughs> I mean, it's like the furthest I, I could one. come from home. And I was like, that. This is, this is the best idea ever. Let's go there. And your sister went there as well. Exactly. So you kind of yeah. decided to go there. And she really liked being uh, living up there. So I thought, why not? But we kept mm. in contact. Like, mm -hmm. okay. I remember after my first solo flight, I texted you like, hey, I did my first solo. Have you done yours? And exactly. you were always a bit step ahead of me. And I kind of 
I was competitive, you know. I was like, I, yeah, I had yeah. to catch up. But, but you guys, you guys were dating at that point, right? No. Oh God, no! Oh no, so oh. you're just friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, yeah. God? Oh, okay. well, no, that was not love at first sight. Okay, no, okay. no, no. All right, okay, cool. Victor was this annoying boy in class that always like lifted up his hand <laughs> and asked the teacher like all these stupid questions, and I looked yeah. at him and was like, "Who is this dude?" But yeah. <laughs> So that was Victor back then. Okay. Yeah, I was the guy raising my hand, like mm. you forgot to give us homework, sir. And they're like, Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see right what I on. have to deal with. Agreed. So did you guys uh, graduate at the same time? We did. Yeah. Okay. So we we All got right. the commercial pilot license the same summer. Yeah. Uh, okay. After that, we went down uh, to Skåne, the southern part of Sweden, where we're both from. So my family is from there as well. So we kind of grew up one hour apart from yeah. each other. Yeah. More or less. Still, uh, still communicating with each other. You're yeah, still, yeah. Like, you're still friends at that point, right? We are, yeah, yeah still okay. friends. But after we got the CPL, we said, "Okay, let's rent a Cessna 172 and fly to Germany." Yeah. Uh, so that was that was the, our first international flight, which was a big deal. Yeah. So, uh, so we rented wow. the Cessna. So who was in, who was in the right seat? Who started? I think I. You I think started? You started flying and I took the ATC from the right seat. Oh, so yeah, you were yeah, in yeah. the captain's seat. So I was so flying you, there so, and then you flew back. Yeah. So Maria was the left seat and uh, Victor, you're in the right seat. That was it. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys did you guys toss a to- coin for that or she uh, or Maria just said no? I won't no. going on the left seat. <laughs> no. I think it was because I at that time I was terrified of talking to ATC. Don't ask me. Right. Uh, don't ask me why. <laughs> like international flight only flown in in G airspace, like I had no idea how to talk to an air traffic controller, so I think <laughs> I think I was more comfortable with flying the plane. But yeah, right, so. right, okay. <laughs> and it was kind of a fun memory from that flight. We departed uh, from Sweden and we went into the uh, uh, area of Copenhagen departure, so Kastrup departure area. And the first bit- thing that happened, twenty minutes into the flight, we get transponder failure. And that's when we were oh, in the no. middle of the departure area out of Kastrup. And the guy is screaming at us, like, where high, the high hell density. are you? <laughs> high density airspace, yeah, no, yeah, no yeah. transponder. And they were like, descend now, get out of our airspace. And that was that was the start. And Yeah, good but, start. Yeah. But, but it went wow. well. We, we, we got to, uh, what was it? Uh, well, it was it's a very small airport yeah, in Germany. Rostock, Rostock. Yeah, Rostock Lager or something. Yeah, airport. And the airport okay. was closed. So that's <laughs> good did, for us. Like, yeah. good, we didn't good, read good the no notes, probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, the terminal was open, but the restaurants were closed. So we okay. didn't, we oh, didn't okay. make right. that right. big of a mistake. But yeah. and no, so after that, we kind of, we got ourselves the commercial pilot license. Mm-hmm. We went for the uh, MCC uh, multi-engine IR as well. And after right. that, when we were ready for uh, applying for the, big airlines we we got the same job in the meantime as well mm. so we were working at the entry wow. point north academy which is a um, air traffic control <clears throat> academy in sweden so we were working as simulator pilots and that's where maria learned how to manage the radios properly yeah talking and, talk, <laughs> pushing yourself out Thank of your God. comfort zone there <laughs> <laughs> and yeah and they're still friends at that point right still friends yeah, yeah. okay it's, it's, it's amazing, you it's amazing that uh, you've got that journey as friends and you're just following the same the same road. It's great. Exactly. You know, it's very unique. He, he keeps copying me. I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's, either, it's either him or you. I mean, we don't know. <laughs> exactly. You know? Uh, but so, so was there an attraction at that point, though? Was there, did you feel anything? Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a romantic kind of guy, so I, I'd like to know a bit more about that, but... Uh, did you uh, uh, did you feel that there would be some future together eventually? Well, let's just say things started around that time. Yeah. Okay, all right. But okay. Uh, yeah, nothing serious. Like, <laughs> we were right, just okay. friends. Like it was like, no, we we can't do this. We're just friends, you know. All of this yeah, always came up in the back of my head when we. We kind of cooked food and stuff together when we were working. And like, okay. is this a date or is this something yeah, just exactly. friends do? I don't really know. <laughs> but we decided Brilliant. just to be friends at that point. Exactly. Yeah. And then okay. we applied for quite a lot of jobs. Like I remember yeah. I applied for 83 jobs in three months after wow. getting all my licenses. Wow. 
Wow. What, what about you? You're uh, very proactive and perseverance, perseverance uh, about yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> wow. I had this Excel sheets, like I did all the research on airlines that could, you know, um, employ ab initio students or the ones with yeah. only low hours uh, and their certificates. So I took all of those in a list and I emailed them and tried to go through all the applications. Uh, wow. It took a long time, like it was yeah. a full time yeah. job applying for jobs, but uh, I got a few replies. Most of them were like, oh, nice to hear from you, but come back when you have 1500 hours. Right. You know, right. So yeah. it was kind of demotivating uh, at times, but I just kept applying. And then eventually I got a few interviews. Mm. So that was that was great. It's good to hear that, uh, Einstein, because we were talking a lot about uh, we, there's a lot of people that listens to the uh, to the podcast that are at that point where you were. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it, and that's it's it proves that what the effort that you put in eventually uh, you'll get something out of it. And it's a, it's a very good point that you make there. And it, it, it's impressive. It, and it shows that uh, you persevered and uh, you weren't a quitter, you know. And that's one of those qualities that we look for, right, Stein? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, uh, yeah. It, like, well, when was this, uh, Victor, you said, when you were started applying for jobs? Which year? Uh, this was, uh, I'm so bad with years. Because Maria always makes fun of me. 1945 or something, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, probably. No, but I think it was... Two, yeah, 2013, 2014, wow, somewhere there. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Maria, Maria did the same thing. Yeah, same year. Yeah. But you didn't apply for 83 jobs. But I, I, I wasn't as, you know, I wasn't as ambitious as my dear boyfriend here. Um, so this just makes me like feel really bad here. Oh well, you still got no, a, no, 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 no. I would have done the same thing. You know, Stein can do no. the things, and I'll just wait till and see. You know, maybe they'll take two. And so what? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, why? <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm just I kidding. applied for uh, two, maybe three jobs. I okay. think, and yeah. I was lucky enough to get an interview within within three weeks. So that's that's a lucky case. Like that does not happen often. So I'm I'm super happy. But I remember we talked about this during those days. Like yeah. I applied yeah. for everything from bush flying in Africa to you know. Uh, yeah. airlines down in Southeast Asia and you were like no I want to yeah, stay exactly. closer to home so I think that was the kind of a big difference between us mm. back then mm. I was open-minded just you know I could go anywhere to mm. job yeah. uh, and I, or to I work. could like stretch to Norway maybe but then I wanted to go back home to Sweden yeah. that was that was kind of where my mindset was at that time mm. well that changed right. but at that did time, you find that did you find because you were a female that you would have probably had a a um much more difficulty uh, going through the, uh, the this man's world that they talk call they used to call it. Uh, did you find that there was any 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 thoughts like that in your mind when you were um, applying for the job? No, at that time, that had never crossed my mind that I was going to be different just because of my gender. Like, right, no, right. Not, not at that time. That okay. happened later once I moved abroad. Oh. So. Uh, when I kind of okay. got into the world where I felt like, yeah, I could see more differences than I had during flight training. Okay. But yeah. All right. Interesting. Good. Well, uh, uh, you were very fortunate then after, and you got the same job, right? The same same company? Yeah. We in did, the end, yeah. we did. Yeah. Wow. What are the odds of that? Did you buy a lottery ticket? <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> didn't win anything. Well, uh, it didn't have much with luck to do. I just have to say, okay, this is a lot of... Effort. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's not. It's not easy. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. no. But oh, yeah, God. yeah, yeah. That's a good point. I think um, yeah, it's very interesting that you guys have been interwoven for for such a long time. It's a pretty cool story, um, and it's also interesting to see that you had you know different approaches, and different th ways of seeing, looking at things along the way. That but you know, it's just you can take different journeys and achieve the same goal. But it's. Um, that's it's right. a pretty cool story. What uh, I think now, you know, looking back, what do you think uh, like that journey was like when you look at it in retrospect? What kind of stands out to you the most in terms of where were the biggest struggles? <laughs> what felt like the biggest achievements? Like what were the ups and downs that seen from your perspective? <laughs> were there any downs or was it all up? I mean, flight school was great. Like, that was the best experience I've ever had. It was good fun all the way through. Busy, but it was fun and you learned a lot. But then 
when you kind of got your licenses, you got all the certificates and you just went, you, you were done with school. Now you're on your own. You're on, on your two legs. You need to do everything from there by yourself to kind of, you know, keep your knowledge up and all that. So I remember I thought that part was quite difficult. Like, how should I study now to keep my knowledge level up? How will I prepare for interviews and all that part? And I, I, I've seen that OSMA, you kind of have that now integrated, like some, you know, courses for students that have, you know, got them through all the programs and they get some help before applying for uh, different jobs. And I think that's absolutely great because for me, that was kind mm -hmm. of the part when you just felt alone and by yourself. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, It's, it's a little bit ambiguous, isn't it? Because there's so many different things you can read about the different processes, right? And different airlines have different sets of doing things. And you don't really know what's going to come up on the test. Um, I mean, you don't know completely when you study for the ATPLs either, but at least you have the learning objectives yeah. and you have sort of a framework to rely on. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. What... Um, Uh, when you uh, when you look at that period, like was there anything that surprised you about making the transition from the flight school into the airline environment? Gosh, I want to say no, but of course there were uh, some. Of course there were some, like the the real world out there uh, compared to flight school is a lot different. And yes, you can you can train for it, you can you can prepare for it, but. But I, I you'll never be like you'll never feel ready. You just kind of had to throw yourself out there. Did you find that you were ready when you got into the seat? That you had the enough, you had the right training to basically transition from where you were into the right seat of this this aircraft, and you just felt, you know what? I got the training, I got the basics, and now it's basically, a, you know, every day is a new is a new chapter in my life, and I'm going to learn as as I go along. Yeah. I would say definitely. I would say definitely, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I felt really prepared coming out of flight school when I got the job, threw out type rating and everything. Like, the foundation I was standing on was solid from flight mm. school. So right, I, right. I felt that was great. Mm. All the learning techniques. So you were techniques. basically airline ready, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, well. I, I would say so. Like, I wasn't ready without all the, like, Blood, yeah, so sweat, and stuff, tears yeah. that it yeah. took to get there. Like I still studied hard, put down a lot of hard mm. work, but I was mm. ready to do that at least. Like, but that's have, also like yeah. a, that's a learning technique that we got from flight school, and of course we needed that to be able to be to get airline ready. Yeah, yeah, and to make I the remember, transition easier. Exactly. Definitely, yeah. and yeah. I, I yeah. remember another part. Like when I was in flight school, I thought, okay. I'm going to study now doing the flight school. I'm going to study during the typewriting, the line training, but then I'll be a line pilot and I'm just going to work kind of like the studies are over. And that was not really the reality, let's say, because right. like your whole career as a pilot is kind of, a, you know, developing, like you're on a developing path. You're always learning new things. You're always striving to be better at what you do and like you keep learning always and that keeps your mind you know in shape like you you feel healthy you always use your brain and yeah i don't know where i'm want to come no, with but, this, I, but i get what you mean like it's a profession that you can't really master like there's always something to learn yes. and i think right. that's the best thing with With That's being well a pilot. said, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a learning curve all the way. Exactly, yeah. and I, there I is a part of the job. Yeah, yeah. but I, I didn't yeah. really know it back in flight school. Like it's going to be like that, but so that was kind of a surprise, but a good surprise uh, in the yeah. end. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would be the biggest advice you could give to the uh, to the youngsters uh, listening now and are going through the same the same uh, stages as you're as you're doing it or uh, as you made it? Yeah. What would be the biggest advice you can give them? Well, I wanted to hear, um, or I want to say, don't give up, be persistent, be annoying, don't be afraid of failures, that's only going to make you grow. Um, like, uh, yeah, if you go for an interview and you fail the interview, it's not yeah, a big deal, it's no. not a failure, you actually learn something from it, you'll, you'll bring that onwards with your backpack with knowledge and Exactly. You'll, you'll probably just do better on the next one that comes up. And so just believe in yourself. And I think 
it's important, like if you go for an interview, you're not, they don't expect you to know everything, like all the details in the book. They want to see that you are a decent person and they see the potential that you can come through as a pilot in their airline. You'll, you'll do great during the training and all Mm. that. So you shouldn't be all knowing, like none of us are like, just believe in the good foundation you have from flight school, keep your knowledge up and just do your best and, you know, try to relax to show your personality instead. I think that was, yeah. I think I would love to hear that before my first interview, because I really thought I need to know all the details and all the books, but that was not the case. Yeah. Yeah. It's nerve wracking. It's, uh, you know, it's stressful and all that, but uh, it was said. Yes. Very good advice. Pilot Talk with Stein Mjotvit and Michelle Treskin. I think uh, one of the things that I kind of want to venture into that we did different for this podcast is that we asked our followers oh, yeah. a bunch of questions that they wanted to ask you guys. So I'm thinking so we don't miss out on any of those that came in. I know that you guys have had a chance to look at them. Uh, we'll, I'll bring up a few and you guys can uh, can throw out the answers to them. Good idea. Perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, okay, so a few people asked if you think they should get a university degree before applying to pilot training. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I'd say you don't necessarily need it. You don't need it in Sweden. I don't have one. I did fine. However, I would still recommend you to have a backup plan. And a university degree is just that. It's a backup plan. It's always good to have, no matter what profession you you do have. It's it's not a bad thing to have, right? Well, that's, that's my thought. Mm. Yeah, and think? like anything could happen during your like career as a pilot. Like you can lose your medical in worst cases. And maybe if you have something in your back um, backpack, then you can, you know, kind of fall back onto and just take up again. That's great. But then again, yeah. it's I, I don't think it's ever too late to start studying again. Like if you're right. 35 or 45 or whatever, and you just feel like the rest of my life, I want to do this. And this is my new passion. Then you should go for it, study it again. So if you don't have it, you enter the aviation business without it. It's never too late to get it later on. Like we even have mm. colleagues of ours that are studying different programs like university programs uh, uh, at a distance uh, while flying. So they're reading the books while up in cruise and they while they're home on the weekends, they do the tests. So you can kind of combine it or you can do it afterwards. It's all depends. On your time off. Exactly. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. So have, having it like, a, you know, uh, just like an insurance policy, uh, an additional possibility should you change your mind and even... You know, if uh, unforeseen circumstances arise and and you lose your medical, like you said, or even in times like these when the job market is, is tough, I can imagine that those who have a backup plan in any shape or form yeah. is probably pretty happy that they they made that decision to have a backup plan, like you put it, Maria. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Nothing wrong yeah. with that. That's for sure. Um, I think we, we also got a lot of, of questions submitted about grades, about, you know, how they can, how people can prepare. Do I need straight A's? Do I need to be, have, be excellent in maths and physics uh, and those kind of things? Uh, what's your perspective on that, on the academic or an, on the academia portion of being a pilot? That's Latin, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Not sure. I'm, I'm ac- academia? <laughs> Acad- is that Latin? I thought it was. I know. Uh, it sounded like a nut. <laughs> <laughs> my, Michelle's always giving me crap for my no, vocabulary. No, no. I, I think I got it. <laughs> you can always pick on the Norwegians, like we Swedes don't mind. Yeah, I know. You're, you're Canadian. Okay. Yeah, you're supposed used to be to nice. Yeah. I, I, am, I, am, I know, am. right? I know. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's a, it's a good question, Stein. Um, I think. Um, where was I going? Well, with did this? you did you have straight A's? No, 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 definitely not. Like. <laughs> I think no, it you don't, I don't go, think you need to be Einstein to become a pilot. No, sure. I mean, different flight schools probably have different, you know, requirements from their students. So maybe you should look into that. And if you see that a school is requiring some certain grade in another course, you can probably always do that course again to try to, you know, get that grades. But then again, we, we don't need to have straight A's. And it goes back to the thing that I said before, like, even flight school, they don't expect you to know it all, like have 
you, you don't have to be a genius. You just need to show the motivation and that you're the right person for the job and the education. Yeah. And I think you come along, like you come far on just that. Yeah, absolutely. And you need, you need physics, you need math, yeah. that kind of stuff, you know, science sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. you do. But then straight A's is necessarily not their requirements. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, the same perspective as we have. We need to, you know, you need to have some sort of foundation to kind of build upon when you're reading the theory. But just like you guys pointed out, and many others um, that we've spoken to on this topic, you know, it's it's a lot about interpersonal relationships. It's a lot about social skills, about attitude, about motivation, about you know, giving it your all. Um, but you don't have to be a straight A student. Mm. No, that's not the case. No, it's also it's. I think aviation and flying planes in particular is a very interesting mix of academics and practical work. Definitely flying the plane, yeah. stick and rudder, talking to people, you know, communications, all that stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So when when it comes to the education for you guys, what what do you feel was the hardest part of the education? What did you enjoy the most, and what did you have to put the most work in to kind of just get through it? You start? Yeah, I was going to say, I can't think of a single thing that I just, I was so talented with and didn't have to struggle with. I think I struggled with most of it. I mean, I, oof, there was a lot of time and effort um, getting where I wanted to be. Um, the, I can't. The social life oof, you yeah, mentioned. Yeah, the social to life me. you. I feel like if you are going into this, if you want to become a pilot, then you have to give up your your social life. I for a short period only. For a short period, right. of course. Yeah, yeah. But you have to be willing to do that. Yeah, um, it's a sacrifice. If you're it not is. a genius, but I don't know yeah. that many. So but, no, you kind of you'll you'll have all the you know the exam periods mm. where you need to study. You need to sit at home in the books, day out. Uh, day and night just to you know pass all those exams and maybe that's during Christmas or that's during other holidays so you kind of miss those things and that was hard for me because my family always come together on those dates and so on but that's kind of the life you need to be prepared to when you start working as a pilot as well because all the people out there they travel the most on the holidays and yeah guess who's flying them that's going to be us and mm. so we'll miss out on those few things. And that was kind of hard at the start in flight school, I remember. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But the good news is that uh, you're not alone when you're, you're going through the course. No. You know, exactly. you've got a lot of work to do and all that stuff, but you always have someone next to you that if yeah. exactly. you need somebody, you gotta, yeah. it's, a, it's a team yeah. effort as well. It is, definitely. That's, that's yeah. the thing. All your classmates are in the exact same position. And those are the ones you're going to turn yourself to when you're in, in trouble or if you need some help and they're going to be there for you. That was the best thing about flight training. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing, actually. Yeah. It's a lot of work <laughs> and it's sacrifice, but boy, it's worth it though, isn't it? It is definitely. No, yeah. No, and yeah. I, I remember that one of the hardest parts for me during flight training was that all the studies were in English. Like back then I, I, my English was not great, but I still had to go through all those 14 books of, you know, yeah. kind of high density <laughs> studies yeah. in English. <laughs> Meteorology and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And aviation terms, like, I didn't know. It just I, felt like a yeah. new language for me. And I was like, wow, so I'm here to become a pilot, but I'm also here to learn a new language, kind of. That's, yeah. Or, yeah. you know. Mm, that's yeah. true. Yeah. But it was just a great experience because I... Like my English knowledge just increased during the training. And so it just prepares you for the life out there as a pilot where we always speak English and so on. But it was kind of hard at the start for me. Mm. Right on. Gotcha. I got, a, I, yeah. I got a question here. I'm, I'm interested to ask you from one of our listeners. Um, I don't have the money, but I want to be a pilot. What can I do? I would say yeah. the best thing then is to go for a modular Based training. So uh, while doing the integrated one, it's very intense. Like I wouldn't have right. time back during my studies to have a job on the side to save up money during the training. That would be kind of impossible. But while doing the modular training, I have loads of friends that, you know, studied uh, one course and then they were working over the summer to save up money for the next. So they kind of did it like a step by step training and they paid yeah. for it themselves. So it 
just took longer time, but we both achieved the same goal in the long run. So I would say that's the best option for you. Perfect. Thank you. Pilot Talk, available on iTunes, Spotify, or osmaviation.com slash podcast. And we also got a bunch of questions about favorite airplanes, obviously, <laughs> since obviously. it's a, a pilot <laughs> <laughs> podcast. So, so, you know, what are your favorite planes? Have you ever flown an Airbus? Uh, what do you prefer, narrow body, smaller planes? <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a personal Airbus. question, buddy. You don't want to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so well, what's, what's, your, what's your comments on that? Oh, wow. Um, let's see. Passenger, I like the airplanes with big windows. Yeah. <laughs> Dreamliner. Um, 787, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, not really. I don't have any preferences. Uh, pilot, I've only done 737. I've uh, been in the cockpit many times in an Airbus. Uh, love the space. Oh my God, you can do yoga in there if you want to. Like there's so much space. Um, so, okay. Don't quote me on this, but I would prefer Airbus even oh. though I fly Boeing. Okay. Oh, right. Ooh, Ooh, very. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> I mean. How about you, Victor? I'm, I'm not sure. Like, I don't have a really a favorite airplane, but I've always been fascinated about supersonic airplanes. So I would say maybe the Concorde, you know, I hope that we in the long run will go back to supersonic flight. That would be yeah. awesome. Uh, but Airbus and Boeing, I, I don't really know. Like the one who pays the bills and gives my off days and holidays approved, those are the ones <laughs> I'm going to fly for. <laughs> so <Good one>. true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so side stick yeah. or yoke doesn't matter. No, not really. Like lifestyle yeah. is more important for me. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, yeah. that's a good uh, that's a good point. Actually, a lot of people are now turning to, you know, I don't care about the, the airplane. It's more of my lifestyle and, and my family and all that stuff. Exactly. You know? mm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, good I agree point. With them. Yeah, very good point. Where, where, it's, uh, sorry, go ahead, Desai. No, I was just going to say that. Did you guys see that um, that Elon Musk and his wife named their kid? Uh, oh God, yeah, uh, <laughs> something. Uh, EMC2, uh, something. It's a Norwegian true. letter, but they say it was uh, the letter for artificial intelligence or something like that. But his contribution, in any way, just a side note, was the A12 at the end. And apparently that's uh, the Archangel, the spy plane that predecessed the SR71. Okay. So that's, that's <laughs> oh, today's I didn't know that. fun fact. Oh. Yeah. So uh, would you name your kid something like that? No. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I'm glad we could agree on this. Yeah. I would yeah. start to panic if you said what. Well, yes. I was like, yeah, common ground, definitely. <laughs> what What do you think of the new technology coming up with the electric uh, electric airplanes and all that stuff? Do you see uh, what do you see it. in the future? Um, uh, you know, hydrogen or electric, and uh, do you see things like that coming to you? Oh, I would love that. Yeah, me too. Bring I love it on. all new types of you know technology coming into aviation. Like I'm open for it. I love to fly an electri- a fully electric plane. Oh, that yeah, would be yeah. really cool. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm longing for seeing it in the commercial side of the aviation business as well. It's coming. It is coming. Is that right, yeah. Isn't that right Stein? Yeah, sure is. Yeah. Um, I, it's probably going to take a while for the longer range aircraft for sure. Yeah, but it's, uh, you know, in the, in the flight training segment is definitely on the horizon. <laughs> um, so we're looking forward to that. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think this one's pretty interesting. I'm aspiring to be a pilot. Uh, I'm wondering if all the hustling will be worth it. Uh, is it worth to put down all the work for the flights in the sky? <clears throat> yes, basically, it's so worth it. It's the simplest answer I can give you. Yes, it's worth it. It's so much more fun after flight training. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what also, about what like about there, now though? Exactly. Like oh, yeah. there is always another sign of a coin. I forgot about now. I yeah. think that. I mean, if you're willing to, you know, be flexible in your life, moving wherever in the world for a job, then it's probably going to suit you perfectly and you're going to love the work. But if you maybe are, I don't know, small town boy like myself and I want to stay in my hometown, my home country, and there's only one airport, you know, the options are very few, limited as well to become a pilot and have that mindset. So you just have to ask yourself, like, do I fit into this? role kind of like could i you know be flexible move wherever change my life and all that because i think that's really important and i think it's going to be hard to become a pilot if you just want to stay at the one 
and only place right. for the rest of your life. Exactly. You need to be flexible. flexible. You need to have an open mind mm. if you want to be in this business. Yeah, you have to be ready to yeah, make the big sacrifice yeah. and leave your home country, leave your family and do whatever mm-hmm. you have to do to achieve that goal that you want. Especially nowadays, Definitely. I mean, uh, yeah. with the aviation right now, what's going on, what would you do, what would you say to them, people that want to become pilots today? Um, as it is today, I would suggest them to <clears throat> maybe wait, meet, wait a few years, or if you hop on a modular course, take it in, give it some time, um, maybe... Maybe now's the time to work on your backup plan. Maybe now's the time to get your university degree, and maybe you can do those things at the same time. Um, this does that. This COVID nineteen these times does not mean that you have to give up your dreams. Definitely not. No. Right. No. The, yeah. I am. I'm certain the the travel industry, the airline industry, it will bounce back like it always have. That's what we have to focus on. It has always bounced back. Um, so you, I definitely think go for your dreams. Maybe at a different um, pace, face, face. How do I say it? Yeah, different you know pace, what I mean. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah take, take your time. Um, yeah, yeah, very good yeah. advice. Absolutely, I, could, I totally agree with that. Um, you know, it's um, it's down now, but it's it's gonna get up. And we're going to walk again and we're going to run again. So uh, I think... Uh, we're going to fly again. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's going to be better, even bigger. So um, don't get discouraged. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah. So, well, this is a cool question too. What's the hardest thing about being a pilot that nobody told you about? Oh, okay. I know. You work <laughs> on Christmas. You work on New Year's. You work on holidays. You work... A lot during the summer. Nobody told yeah. me that. <laughs> I mean, you were expecting to lie on the beach. All I summer, was expecting to lie on the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but okay. <laughs> I know that. That's also what I like about this job. Like you have off days when nobody else have off days, um, yeah. but you also have once again you have to be flexible. You need to know that you might not be able to go to your best friend's wedding because you didn't get the days approved. Because well. Mm. It's busy when most people are not. So, yeah. So that's yeah, the, so that's the worst part of being a pilot, basically. <sighs> yeah. I, like yeah. the worst part for me is <laughs> early. <laughs> Here we go. No, yeah, definitely. Like early, they're killing me. But early flights. <laughs> uh, but it's not too bad. Like I expected that as well. Yeah. But. Oh, uh, I know. As a first officer. Oh yeah. Are you yeah. thinking the same? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As a first officer, you kind of need to be a chameleon, you know. You need to be able to adapt and change the way you th- say things. You need to, you know, because of different captains you're flying with, you need to, you know, kind of behave and do stuff in different matters. Like, you always need to follow the guy to ensure you work sa- safely and efficiently together. But you work with all different kinds of people with different backgrounds, different cultures, and they might think some things are... Uh, like, if you say it that way, they'll be offended. If you say it another way, they'll be happy. Like, it's kind of hard to get used to. And I that was a mm. big surprise for me, starting to work as a pilot. Because a right. lot of energy and a lot of energy goes into that. You need to think, like, okay, who is who am I flying with? And how does he like it? And all that. So, yeah. so, so Always different be personalities. Ready. Exactly. Different personalities and all. Yeah. yeah. Always be ready yeah. to adapt and just make That's sure right. the outcome is safe and... Mm. Don't talk politics. <laughs> uh, like you can sit together yeah. with the guy for ten hours straight, and he's just you know uh, talking about I don't know politics, and it's hundred percent of different ideas and yeah. uh, opinions but, that you have yourself, and you kind of just sit on your hands and be quiet. And you know we are fly- we're here to be flying safe and not discuss these things because some people could be you know right I don't know, offended. Be offended and all that stuff. Mm. So you need to be yeah. able to adapt. But I also, think I think you become a better sorry. person at the end oh, yeah. after definitely, going through all definitely. those personalities and all that. Also, I want to point out, like ninety percent of the flights, it doesn't even feel like you're working. You're sitting there next to like a friend, and after been flying for ten hours, you you think like, did I really get paid for this? Like just sitting and chatting and landing and takeoff. It's, it's 
I I love my work. I really have oh, to yeah, say. And too. then it's like me too. less less yeah. than ten yeah. percent of those days you really yeah. have to make an effort. It's one of those but, it's one of those works where uh, work that uh, you get up in the morning or get up at night and you say, All right, I'm going flying and I'm gonna fly with this guy because I flew with this guy before, it's gonna be a gas. You know? exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Very satisfying. It Once is. in a while you'll hit a you know, a guy that's not a that bump. great, but yeah. <laughs> A bump. But you, yeah, a bump. Yeah, a bump that's in right. the road. A bump in the road. Yeah. Stay professional, that's it. And go that's it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Good stuff. Hmm. So when are you guys getting married? <laughs> uh, we don't have any wow, okay, I was not <laughs> No pressure, Victor. No pressure. <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're not. No. No, you're I actually... In, um, you're living in sin. Yeah. We're living in sin. Look at us. Wow. Hello. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, we like to think of ourselves as being in a modern relationship. Um, if we can say that without offending anyone. Yeah. Like, um, can we cut that Absolutely. out? Absolutely. Um, we'll just hear a continuous beep yeah, exactly, during the whole podcast exactly. now. Um, <laughs> but no. Technical no, issues. <laughs> no plans on that. No, it's, it's an adult uh, podcast. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, so yeah, let's keep going. There's okay, a lot of good stuff. I think uh, was becoming a pilot your dream, or was there any other things? This one's pretty That's interesting. One. It's kind of cool to hear if you guys had any other aspirations. I'm trying to recall, as my memory is not the best. Um, but what I'm... you're thinking? I'll go for it. Okay. No. Yeah, yeah, I'm you kidding. go for it. <laughs> no, but when I was seven, I said I want to be a you know. Fireman. When I was ten, I wanted to be a policeman. When I was twelve, I wanted to be a burglar. And then Wait, you know, what? a burglar. <laughs> burglar. <laughs> what happened no, there? I'm just That's kidding. But then I wanted to be a farmer, and so on. And then, kind of around fourteen, I was like, okay, aviation is really cool. My my bigger brother, he has a friend who went to uh, the flight school that I went to. And they were talking about it. And then when I heard that, I was hooked. And I was like, okay, from now on, that's what I'm going to aim for. So, yeah, not all my childhood, but, uh, yeah. 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 But for me, oh, oh. it always felt like a natural career path for me to take. Um, as my, my dad has been a pilot his whole life. Right. Right. And I got to sit with him on the jump seat while he was flying and pushing all those <laughs> buttons and going to all these cool destinations. And I've always felt like, yeah, if dad can do it, then so can I. And um, my sister is also a um, commercial pilot, also went to the same school, OSM oh, Aviation right. Academy. And I, I think it kind of just ran in the family, I guess. Um, I mean, a lot of kids do what their parents do, so I guess I'm I'm one of those. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so you have a sister and brothers, or just one oh, sister? Only sisters. We are four sisters. And wow. The oldest one is uh, yeah, she's a pilot herself. Doesn't work as a pilot at the moment, but yeah. Great, cool. it's a big family. That's awesome. <laughs> How do you have any siblings, Victor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot. Like he's got about twenty. Or so. No, I think I think we're. Ten? I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? No. Did you lose no, count? I, That's I, amazing. I grew up with four of them, so we were five during my whole childhood. And then after a few years, we got two, um, two more coming. Two more. What do you call it? We call it sladdis in Swedish. Like you should have okay. bought, bought a TV or something. Like <laughs> no. Should have bought a TV. No. So we were quite a few. We were quite a few. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Eh? Big family. That's, that's I cool. I love it. Though. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and so who's my... gonna be who's gonna be the captain first? Ooh. Well hopefully well The plan was the plan was last year uh to become a pilot or to become a captain. Uh <laughs> that didn't happen due to we never received the the, the maxes that was gonna come. They got delayed. Oh yeah. Uh yeah. and then guess what? COVID nineteen. So everything got really delayed and now we are just waiting in turn for them to wanting more captains and we don't know nobody knows um it's uncertain times right now um yeah. we're just happy we still have our jobs as first officers uh, yeah. but of course 
we're uh, we're still in our careers right now. It's a it's a little pause. Hopefully, we, for the plan a short was while. to do the the simulator training and everything together. So mm. you pair up two and two while you're doing the captain upgrade simulator. <laughs> so the plan was to ask uh, the company to do it together. Uh, so mm. at least she can't get that fourth stripe before me. So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get them at the same time. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, that's great. And on, and on that topic, who greases the 737 landing? Oh, it's, not, that, yeah. it's not me. <laughs> well, I, I can take that one if you want. Like, no. Like, <laughs> no. Who's, uh, I, no. I don't know. It's. 50, I mean, 50. a safe <laughs> landing is not necessarily exactly. a greaser. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. A greaser is a long landing. Exactly. That's it. That's it. <laughs> exactly. But you can do that if you have a 4K runway, but usually we fly into these really small airports and mm -hmm. this is a bit trickier to do a yeah. smooth yeah. landing, but yeah, safe it yeah. is. Yeah. That's, uh, and, and you guys also do some, every now and then you'll race back home to your home base, right? Is that correct? That's I true. Remember that correctly? Yes. <laughs> Oh, because always, you guys are in the air at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have the same roster, so same schedule. We take off at the same time, and we kind of fly the same distances and land really? back at the same time. Yeah. So, How cool is that? So we fly a lot to the UK, actually, from Spain. Yeah, so, uh, we do. Sometimes I fly to Liverpool. She flies to Manchester, which is the, just next door. And right, then that's right. in London Control, uh, French airspace, we hear each other in the frequency always. So we kind of have a race going on. Uh, on the way home. <laughs> yeah, bring that cost index up. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's a secret that's race, right, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah we we'll won't say anybody. <laughs> no, yeah. we, oh, that's uh, cool. we pull all the tricks in the book to get home fastest. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. right on. Right on. It's, uh, it's, it's Someone even asked that, how, how did you manage to both be employed at the same company and in the same city? Is that something you actively work towards? or well, is it a no, that was not our plan. Like That kind of just happened. I mean, Victor and I started as friends. Um, I joined the company, what, a few months before you? Mm -hmm. uh, got my base in Palma de Mallorca, had the best time line training ever, and then got based in Tenerife, had the best time there ever. I love the island. And then that's when we started dating. Exactly, that's when we started dating. And you were what first in Hahn in in Frankfurt in Germany. Yeah, yeah. that wasn't so exciting. No, and then, uh, and then <laughs> Croatia. Oh, really? what? No, it was it was German weather, kind of on the on the countryside. Not much to do and training, and it was busy during the winter time as well. A lot of DIs and yeah. that oof, nasty stuff. Oof. So yeah. terrible weather. <laughs> I remember you calling me from Frankfurt and was like. This is horrible, Maria. I'm in line training. And you I'm were like, at the beach. <laughs> I was like, life will get better. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> I'm having a margarita. <laughs> Easy to say from the beach. <laughs> and, and I, I just like, de iced four times that day. Like, it was horrible. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that happened. And then um, we got a base request in. Like, you were based in Alicante at the time. I was in Tenerife. And we thought, okay, if we're going to make this work, we need to be at the same base if we're not on the exact same roster and we can then go see each other on our off days. But, you know, Tenerife is a long way. Um, so we had two base requests in. Victor had one for Tenerife and I had one from Alicante. And we said, whoever gets it first, we'll move. That's where we're going to live. <laughs> yeah, that's where we're going to live. So uh, I got Alicante yeah. almost, almost one year after. And uh, here we are. <laughs> All right, nice. It could have been Tenerife yeah. as well. Could we could have, have been, uh, ended yeah. up there, but they answered your request first. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's, it's too windy up there anyways. Exactly. Yeah, well, you have to pick your spots. It's great yeah, for yeah. kite surfing. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta see the positive. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. There's always a positive. Exactly. There's always a positive. Yeah. yeah. It's all about perspective. So I think um, I, there's a few other questions on that topic as well. You know, I think we've touched on some of them, but like when it comes to this, they're on the general topic of like trying to create a life together. Like the two of you, you fly for an airline, you're now in the same city, which is nice. You even have the same roster, but you know, are there, are there challenges? What are they? How do you deal with it? Like, how do you kind of plan your life around this career choice of yours to make it work in an optimal way for you? Good question. Yeah. Um, well, I have to I'm say... I'm looking at you. <laughs> I can answer that if you want. Yeah. Is she the planner? <laughs> no, we're both planners. Yeah, we're both planners. Yeah. Um, okay. But I'd say 
What was I going to say? You interrupted me. Gosh. Sorry. I forgot. Mm. Well, ask again. What was the question, Stein? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think just uh, it seems like uh, our followers are curious to know, like, how do you make the work life balance thing? happen in a good way like do you have tricks do you have things that like you know Tips. you just described yeah yeah i mean you just described how you ended up in the same city yeah. and you kind of had a very good process to get there but in the day-to-day -day, like what do you guys do to make life optimal i guess i mean we started off when she was based in tenerife and i was based in alicante we had the same roster so we could still go with because we have five days on four days off we could still travel to one another on those four days off and meet up But then all of a sudden, they gave you a notification like, hey, due to operational reason, we swapped your roster. And we had a look at it and we compared the two and they were 100% opposite. So we were like, wow. wow. Mm. And that can happen just like this. And they mm. were 100% opposite for two people in two different bases. So we just mm. saw that like we will <clears throat> never be able to meet up. She'll always be mm. away when I'm off and the opposite. So it can be really hard. And I've, I think we have been really lucky getting the same base, same roster, but everybody's not in this position. So it's no. nothing we take no. for granted. We know that it can change anytime, any day. And that mm. we, but yeah. then we just need to, you know, face yeah. those yeah, struggles exactly. and try to work it out in some way. Yeah. You know, yeah. we can always... We can always change our bases or even change companies in the long run to, you know, to search for work. a better life long term. So yeah. you kind of have to do sacrifices once again to make yeah. it work. Yeah. And it's this work-life balance. It's an ongoing thing, like all the time. It's not mm. like we had it like this on the same roster, on the same base from the very beginning. You you have to make sacrifices. You have to uh, be <clears throat> flexible, flexible <clears throat> once again. Like it's so important yeah. in this line of work, I think. But it sounds like a fairy tale so far. The way it worked out, you know, the same, the now same uh, graduation yeah. Yeah. year, the whole thing is, and now that you're together, I mean, it's it's a fairy tale. Yeah, it's, it's which which is a it's fairy really tale we know are gonna break up once we become captains, and we probably have to go to another base, and probably gonna be on a opposite roster. But that's something we we are willing to do. Mm. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're willing to face it, you know, exactly. to take that next step in our careers. But in the meantime, try our best to keep the relationship working and see each other as much sure. as possible. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. We, yeah. So we're not taking anything for granted. Like, we're super happy where we are now. Yeah. But it will change. And we are ready for that change whenever that may come. Yeah. You should say it might change. In, most yeah. probably. <laughs> yeah, you never know. You never know. Yeah. You know. That's good. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Seems like a healthy approach to me, you know, yeah. kind of being prepared for that things are really great now and appreciating that, but at the same time knowing that, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not always going to be smooth sailing. We might run into parts or periods of our life where we're going to have to fight a little bit harder. Hmm. And if you kind of have that mindset that that might occur, it's going to be easier to deal with it once it comes up, no? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Good point. And, uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to skim through all the questions there. There's so many that came in uh, for you guys. You were really well, you know, there's so many people that, that love you guys and want to learn more about you. I think it's really cool to see. Um, I think uh, trying to f sort out which ones we haven't covered here. Oh, yeah, what's your, what's your favorite destination And do you use a digital or a paper-based logbook? Oh. We're kind of jumping in between <laughs> kind of the topics that? here. But That's kind yeah, of funny, though, because I looked into a digital logbook today. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh, you did? I did, did yeah. I, I'm old-fashioned, so I use paper and pen. You do, too, right? I, I do, too, when I fill up my logbook, yes, but I do prefer a digital. I think it's time to change to a digital as well. Yeah. Like, you know, you can lose yeah. the old books or whatever, but it's just nice to have a digital backup. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then favorite destination, point. I said, I would say whichever takes you home. Back to Alicante. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Alicante. Yeah. Yay. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of questions that I think that we've answered in a way that you've answered in a way, you know, asking other questions and all that. Um, there's a lot of questions about COVID-19 questions. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, I see that coming up here towards the end, and yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's good time. Now we've, 
it's a good time to branch into that because sure. obviously this is something that a lot of pilots are, are thinking about. And uh, we've got some questions on that topic for you guys as well. Mm. Um, and some of them is like, how do you see the growth in the industry? How do you see the industry after this <clears throat> pandemic? And what pilot demand will there be in four to five years time? And, and I think, you know, we touched on this before. I, it's it's it, None of us can really predict the future. Um, and I don't think that's the expectation either. But what's your current perspective on things, on the situation, you know, what has it led to? What's going through your mind right now? I mean, it's going to be tough. We have a few years ahead of us that are going to be tough. I have many friends, former colleagues, and even classmates from the school that are, you know, they got sacked and they are unemployed at the moment. Uh, they're not very happy, uh, but they're trying to be, you know, positive and flexible. But as a student pilot, you have to see that these guys are probably going to, you know, be employed before the guys coming straight out of flight school. Because these are pilots with a lot of experience uh, that are willing to move and work in different parts of the world. And they're going to do that because they have a house, family, mortgage, whatnot. And these guys, you know, there are a lot of people out there with a lot of experience that are going to get hired first. That's basically the it's. I think. Uh, yeah, that's a fact. That's yeah. a fact. And if you yeah. come out of flight school, um, it's going to be tough. But just keep your knowledge up, you know, stay hanging there and keep studying, flying at the local flying club or whatever. Use the flight simulators you have in the vicinity of where you live, if there are any. And keep your knowledge level up. That's the best, I think, tip and recommendation mm -hmm. we have because it's going to take some time and it's going to be tough. But that's yeah. that's the reality. <clears throat> Keep the faith. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And you, you guys also mentioned, um, you know, I mean, it's. I think I'm. Very, we're all. I think we're all very humble to the fact that a lot of people are in a tough spot right now. I just. I want to say that on behalf of all of us because we spoke about that. We've spoken about that before. We spoke about that before we started the recording and. Like you said, Victor, a lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people are in a tough spot right now. I think about it every day. I'm still able to go to work, and and so many of my industry colleagues are not. And that's like you said, it's just it's really really tough. Um, but I liked, uh, and I think it's okay to say that. You know what I mean? Um, but I think it's also important to try and take steps. You, you touched on this, Maria, to have a a backup plan. And if you don't have one already, maybe now is the time to start to start going towards having a backup plan or having another thing to lean on when the going gets tough. Um, I actually got an email from one of the industry colleagues down at the university in Lund in southern Sweden here a couple of days ago. They launched an um, they've launched an online course I saw that uh, one, for yeah. pilots. Yeah, oh, really? so you know that's that's one thing. You know, now obviously we can't cover everything that's out there that's possible to do, but that's one thing that I hope and think will be a way forward for some people. Definitely. You know, yeah. building on the pilot licenses, getting a bachelor's degree on top of that, which might lead to other opportunities. Yeah. Maybe people want to do something completely different. Maybe you want to explore your artistic <coughs> side, uh, start studying something in a different industry. I think there's, um, I think that was just like, that was a really good insight. Um, and I also like the fact that you guys are humble. I mean, all of us to the fact that not everybody's in the lucky position that we are in right now. Yeah. Sure. And I mean, yeah. we have discussions, Maria and I, like we, at the moment we have our job, but anything can happen. We know that the company uh, is planning to, you know, fire some people, uh, pilots and cabin crew as well. And we might be unlucky and be one of them. We have no idea. So, you know, it's mm. kind of scary to just sit and wait, like you see what's happening around in the industry. And we we don't know about our future either. So everybody is mm. exactly everybody yeah. is touched by this. And it's it's hard times. Like we discussed how long can we if one of us keeps the job, can we you know pay the mortgage? Can we do this? Do we need to move somewhere? And like it's hard decisions you're facing. And all of us are. And it's. It's just going to be like this for a, for yeah. a, for some time now. And yeah. uh, that's the but reality. It won't, it won't be forever. That's, no. a, that's a good thing about it. Exactly. You know, it's, yeah. There's a light, there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you're right. Uh, and 
you know, you said the same thing, uh, Stein, you know, you got to keep yourself busy. You got to look at other things. But the big thing is not don't get discouraged. It's going to it's going to get better. It's uh, we're going to come out of it and we're going to be stronger. That's it. Yeah, you know, exactly. Keep the faith, brothers. Yeah. That's it. Sisters. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> on that on that topic as well, I mean, just, you know, are, are anything that you guys are doing right now to kind of uh, stay busy and and uh, venture into other areas or do, do more of a hobby that you have? Like, what are you guys doing right now to keep sane? <laughs> we, we kind of have a bit of launched course from the airline of ours that we need to do online to, you know, keep current and keep our knowledges up. So we kind of do those. Uh, we try to stay positive and hope that we'll be get going back flying in July. Uh, that's the last news. So hopefully that's the case. Uh, but I've also applied for a couple of courses on the university back home in Sweden, uh, online courses for the, um, for the fall, uh, that is coming. Mm. So a few things, few things backing up, um, the situation if we lose our jobs, but that, that's yeah. my side. Yeah. How about you? Um, except from Netflixing, um, yeah. <laughs> baking and eating, um, yeah, same stuff. <laughs> no, but just trying to be positive. I mean, yeah, exactly. Uh, spending a bit more of my time on social media these days, but uh, yeah, yeah, all good. Yeah, I was. At, I had this awesome ambition about reading, you know, reading more, and instead I'm just finding myself binge watching Tiger King. So you know, <laughs> that's it. you don't always. We've all been there. Yeah. We've all been there. <laughs> and it's okay. I'm watching it's Outer okay. Banks right now. Oh, Kids and cats. Outer Banks. <laughs> Outer Banks. Have you seen that one? No, I've just seen I the have trailer. Not. Pretty good. Is, okay. Is it good? Cool. Yeah. yeah. You got to check that out. Yeah. Other banks yeah. and the gin and tonic. There's nothing wrong with that. Perfect. <laughs> Sounds good. There you go. Yeah. Right on. Pilot Talk. Available on iTunes, Spotify, or osmaviation.com slash podcast. Okay, so I have a question for you, Stein. Um, what are you back at OSM Aviation Academy telling all the students there now, like these difficult times with COVID-19 and whatnot? To be honest with you, that's that's the only thing that we can really say. The, t the times are tough right now. They really are. And the job market, the recruitment, nothing's going to happen for the rest of the year. Um, that's for sure. Uh, so well, we've we've launched a project. Uh, the first stage of that's uh, it's called Project Resilience. And the first stage of that is that we're now planning for uh, every student that graduated from the 1st of October and all of this year um, to come back in pairs once every two months to fly the Boeing 737 simulator. So that's like... Wow, that's yeah, great. That is awesome. Yeah, and it, at least it's one great step in the right direction. You know what I mean? Because we know that, like you guys were touched on this before, we're going to be in this situation for a while. So we looked at it and we said, okay, where can we take action? We can help our students stay fresh. We can help our students stay proficient above and beyond the one time a year proficiency check that is required on a regulatory level. Um, so that's, and you know, we're looking at some other initiatives as well, but that's one of them. That's, I'd say the most important thing. But when it comes to the message, yeah, that's the big yeah. but when it comes to the message, it's kind of like what you guys said. It's tough right now. And you're going to have to be mentally prepared that it's going to take a while. It's not going to be, be like in 2017, 18, 19, where people just went straight into the right seat, started flying 7-3 or A320, you know, got the first job, some of them before they even graduated. That's not what it's going to be moving mm -hmm. forward. Um, so, yeah, that's the message. Yeah. But thankfully, we have some really, you know, resilient, tough students, and they're supporting each other as well in the midst of all this, which is really uplifting to see. Um, so they, you know, they know that it's going to be uh, tough going forward here, but I think they've got the perseverance to, to fight through it. That's great. Beautiful. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Hang in there, boys and girls. Hang in there. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Hang in there. Resilience all the way. Resilience all the way. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, okay. I can't, like, I've been scrolling through all these questions. I think that we've, We've touched on all of them, and uh, we arrived at the you know the COVID nineteen destination as as we do so many times these days. Um, but um, I just really like to thank you guys for joining us for this podcast, for sharing your perspective, 
and for sharing your views and um, your story more than anything. Yeah. Um, it's been a real pleasure uh, to talk to you guys. Um, and I think, you know, towards the end, Michelle, do you have anything that you want to add or... Well, again, my, my side, uh, it was a pleasure having you on, on, on the show. Uh, you guys are great, and you're a very good example for uh, the future, for the, the, the people that are listening and, and watching us as well. I mean, uh, keep on doing what you're doing. It's great. It's a beautiful story. I think, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, there's a film material, like a movie <laughs> material there. I think it's uh, something to do. But, uh, you know, keep us in touch, uh, what's going on, and we wish you all the very best. For sure. Definitely. We'd love to have you on board again uh, once you start flying or once you get to your captains and see how that journey is coming up. But it was great. It was really, really, you guys are lovable. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Pleasure. Pilot Talk with Stein Mjotvit and Michelle Treskin. Okay, that's a wrap for today's episode. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to follow the Pilot Talk podcast on Instagram for behind the scenes material. There you can also send us your feedback, your ideas, questions, suggestions for new guests. And uh, we're going to have competitions from time to time where we give away free stuff. And as, and as always, you can find our podcast on Spotify, iTunes, and Podbean. And you can also tune in at osmaviation.com slash podcast. And uh, until next time, my friend. Blue sky. And happy landings. You bet. Take care. Ciao.